This is my favorite kitchen knife. I made this a few years ago from a knife that broke, the handle broke off actually. So what I did was I welded on a piece of just ordinary mild steel, the same thickness as the blade. And then I made new wooden handle for it. But as you can see, over time, the mild steel did rust and it did kind of make the handle kind of crappy. And in this video, I'm gonna strip off this old handle and make a new one for it. I'm gonna be using an interesting material though. It's actually epoxy grout that I used in my kitchen and in my shower. So the first step to using this is to cut it down to size. I'm gonna do that on a table saw mostly, but before I do that, I'm gonna change the blade to an old worn out one because this stuff has sand in it. It is after all an epoxy grout and I don't wanna ruin a good blade cutting it up. Wow, this stuff is surprisingly hard to cut. And I don't think I'm gonna have much of a blade left after I get through with this. The idea here is just to square this up and then try to maximize what I get out of it into a block that I can use to make the two handle scales. And when I have that roughly done, I can remove the old handle from the knife. As you can see, it was in one piece, so I'm splitting it off. And it was just glued to the tang with epoxy. Wow, that was way more rusty than I thought it would be but I can grind that all off. When I compare the two, I can see that my new blocks are a little bit shorter than the old handle was, but I still think that it's more than big enough for this. Before I can put these new handle scales on, I need to make one more cut on the table saw that I kind of forgot about, and that's to make a rabbit that fits around the tang of the blade on the top of the knife on both sides. All that cutting created quite a lot of dust in my shop. So I got out the redneck room again and I opened the back window and I blew in from there. And that'll push the majority of the dust out through the front door. And then to finish the shaping on this, I'm just gonna do it outdoors rather than pollute my shop again. I had to do a little bit of fine tuning on the handles to get them to fit tightly on the tang of the blade. And to glue this on, originally I was going to use epoxy, but I don't have any of that's black and I don't have anything that can make it black. But I do have this black plastic casting resin that's uh, only about 10 years old and hopefully it still works. But you know the way it is, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I don't have anything to lose by doing this. I mean, I can always go back and make a new wooden handle for the knife if this thing doesn't work. This stuff is really thin when you mix it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up way more than I actually need. And I'm gonna let it thicken up for a little bit in the cup before I use it. Or we can call this a test to see if it actually works. And it looks like it's gonna be okay. So now I can go ahead and mix up the real batch and use that. So this time I won't let it get as thick. All right, another successful test. At this point, I'm very confident in the ability of the epoxy to set up. So now I can actually go ahead and glue the handles on.
Well, I gave that casting resin overnight to dry, and it gave me a chance to try to pick the little bits of it off my fingers, because apparently there's no solvent that will take that off. So I guess it's the kind of thing that just has to wear off. Anyway, the casting resin is pretty brittle, so I want to strengthen the bond between the handle and the blade tang. And to do that, I'm going to wear out a bunch of bits trying to drill quarter inch holes for the pins. Now the pins are something different for me anyway. I've seen this done before, but I haven't tried it myself. And it's just a group of short pieces of copper wire put in the hole. And then I'm going to pour more of that casting resin down around them. Except this time, I'm not going to let it get thick because I really want it thin to go down around these wires. This may turn out to be a mistake, but this glue that I'm putting on here now is there to stop the casting resin from running out the bottom when I pour it in. Ideally, I'd like to leave this to dry and then do it, but I'm going to pour it in there when it's wet. I let that cure for about 20 minutes and looking at it, it looks pretty good. It certainly all didn't leak out. So with that out of the way, I can bring it back outdoors again and start shaping the handle. I'm going to be doing all of this freehand with the grinder and a diamond blade. And I kind of have a shape in mind while I'm doing this, but we'll see where it goes. I'm finding that the diamond blade is a little bit too aggressive with this. I don't have as much control as I would like. And it doesn't help that it's freezing cold outside doing this. So I'm going to switch to a flap disc and see how that works. And hopefully I can get it to the shape I want it. I'm not looking for a perfect texture here. I'm not looking for this to be glassy smooth. Actually, the way it felt after just grinding it down with the diamond blade feels pretty good. Like if I were to knock the corners off. I kind of like that. It, it feels like it's, you know, there. Alright, it's going reasonably well with the grinder and the flap disc. It didn't have any problem whatsoever grinding down the grout, but it was getting a little bit gummed up on the copper pins. So I'd be grinding deeper around those. And not to mention that my hands are freezing cold at this time, with the fan from the grinder blowing right up my sleeve. So I decided to bring it inside and finish the shaping on my belt grinder. I've got a silicone carbide belt put on there that's used for grinding glass and stone, so it shouldn't have any problem with the grout. And the handle dust, I adapted a crevice tool that came with the vacuum so I can hook up my shot back to it. And hopefully that gets the bulk of the dust as it comes off the belt. As it turns out, the shot back was very effective at capturing the dust that was coming off the belt. I had very little getting into the air in the shop here. However, I did have to wear a dust mask while doing it, just in case I don't want to be breathing this stuff in. That's for all you guys out there with the burning question as to whether I was wearing one or not. Yes, I was. My lungs will live to fight another day. So the silicone carbide belt I had on there, I think was 60 grit, and that was cutting through it really fast. And that gave me the rough shaping that I wanted. I really should have started with this in the beginning and not with the grinder outdoors. So much more pleasant working with this machine inside where at least it's partially heated. And then after I got the rough shape done, I switched to a finer belt and I did a bunch more work. Most of which I'm not gonna show here because there was quite a bit of handwork after this as well. Normally for something like this, I would put some oil or something on the handle to give it that nice, rich, wet look. But this time I'm gonna leave it exactly the way it is right here because I think it looks good like that and certainly feels good. After all, this is a kitchen knife and not a showpiece, so I'm not gonna go crazy polishing it up or anything. 